In this video I'll show you how to make a grouped bar chart that looks like the one here in the corner using the open source statistical programming language R. So if you're not very comfortable creating charts, I recommend that you plan it out first. And one of the things you can do is to first create a mock-up. You can do something as simple as using a pencil and paper and just drawing up what you expect the grouped bar chart to look like. Then the next thing you want to do as part of that exercise is to identify which variable is going to go along the x-axis, the horizontal axis. And in a grouped bar chart, uh, this will often be the variable that will act as like the larger grouping within which there will be individual bars characterized by a Another variable in inside of that. The next thing you should identify is which variable will go along the y-axis. So what will be the variable that is associated with the height of the bars. Then also you want to identify which variable will be used to differentiate um, the bars within that larger grouping I was talking about, um, the variable that's along the x-axis. So for example, let's say on along the x-axis you're going to use uh, race. And, and, and a participant's race. And so you have different categories for race. And then within each of those categories, you could have it the bars differentiated by gender. So for example, within um, white participants, you could have um, male and female, and then non-binary or whatever other categories you wanted to represent there. And then you could have those same groupings within each other race uh, category. And once you've identified those elements, you're ready to aggregate the data because now you know how you need to aggregate the data in order to produce the grouped bar chart. So if you want to follow along with the example in this video, I'm using R version 4.1.2, the dplyr package version 1.0.7, and the ggplot2 package version 3.3.5. And if you don't know why it's important to know the versions that I'm using, uh, check out the video that I created on understanding R packages. If you want to replicate what I'm doing, check out the description of this video where you'll find a link to the folder with all of the files for this project. So we'll start out by importing the CSV data here. And this file has 1,897 rows and 194 variables. Then we'll load the dplyr package and then we'll load the ggplot2 package. And let's just take a look at this data set really quickly. So uh, we've got the columns income and education, and those are the two that we're going to be using in this file. And uh, income is categorical. It's got different ranges for income. And then education is also categorical. It's got labels such as high school grad, some college, etc. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this data set and then we're going to group the data by those two variables, income and education, because we're going to calculate summary statistics that we eventually want to plot um, as a function of these two variables. So we will run this line. And then the next thing we'll do now that we have these data grouped by income and education is we're going to create some summary statistics. So we'll put the same object that we've created that's grouped the data by these two variables put that within this function called summarize that's also from the dplyr package and what we will tell r is we want to create a new variable called number of customers and that will be equal to just the n function here in dplyr so that'll count up the number of rows and it will do so within every cross-section of income and education um, because that's how the data are grouped here so once we run this and i'll highlight both lines because my code runs across lines here i'll run that and now if we take a look at this object, we see that there's one row for each combination of income and education. And then there's a column here called number of customers. And that's what we created using this line of code here. So now that we have this summary data, which we're ready to plot, um, we just want to do a little bit more cleaning. So we know that education and income have particular order to their values, and we just want to make sure those are represented because in this file here, it looks like income is just a character and education is a character. And we want R to respect the different levels of that so that when we display the results, that it's keeping them um, in that consistent order that we care about. And to do that, we're going to use this mutate function from the dplyr package, and we will give it these, this object, this uh, data frame we've created here. And we're going to create a new variable called education, which of course is the same name as an existing variable. So it'll overwrite that. And we want it to overwrite it using the education variable, but convert it to a factor. And the factor is R's way of uh, treating a column like it's categorical. And so um, within that function factor, we're going to tell it the levels and we'll specify each of these levels in the order that we want them to be in here. Um, and we'll do the same thing for income. So once we run this, 
And again, my code here is across two lines, so I'll run that. So the next line of code here uses the ggplot2 package, and it uses various functions within that package. ggplot2 is used for creating a variety of different visualizations. And the gg in ggplot2 stands for the grammar of graphics. And basically, it uses this philosophy that every graphic is made up of various components that are added together to produce um, the desired chart or graphic of any type. And that's how ggplot works, is you basically layer different components on top of one another to create the target chart or graph that you want to create. And we'll always start out here with this first function, which is just ggplot. So from the ggplot2 package, I want the ggplot function, and that function takes a few different arguments. One of the arguments is data. So we have to tell it what is the data frame that we're gonna use for this. And we're gonna use the one that we've created here that has all the summary information that we want to graph. Then the next argument is in this aes function. And the aes function is useful for whenever you wanna map a variable in the data frame with one of the arguments. And so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna map education to the x-axis. So we'll do that by saying x is equal to education within this AES function. And then we'll say y is equal to number of customers. So this is where it was important to, or this is why it was important to think through what you want your chart to look like. Uh, because once you know what you wanna map on the x-axis and on the y-axis, et cetera, it becomes really easy to plug them into the corresponding places here. And then we'll use this fill argument and we'll say fill is equal to income. And that's denoting that um, the differentiator for the columns within each level of the x-axis. So in this case, within each level of education, the differentiator is going to be income. Now, if I run this, it'll just give me a chart here where education is mapped to the x-axis and number of customers is mapped to the y-axis, but you'll notice that there is no figure in here. And that's because we've laid the foundation for this chart by saying what's gonna go on the x-axis, what's gonna go on the y-axis. Um, we've even specified that income will be the thing that denotes differences within those categories, but we haven't specified what the actual image is gonna be that's gonna go in here. For that, we're going to use this geom bar function, which is gonna tell are that we're adding the, a bar chart on top of that. And we're using this plus here. So we're adding this next layer of a bar chart. And this geom bar takes a couple of different arguments. The first one here is, is gonna be position is equal to dodge. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna just tell our, you know, that you want those bars to be dodged a bit, to sort of be separated so that they're side by side as opposed to being stacked. And we're gonna use stat is equal to identity, just meaning that we just want R to use the Y axis, the, the Y variables values as is. Now, if we run this, the geom plot function, as well as the geom bar added to that, you see that we have this chart here, which is a grouped bar chart, and that's great. But we also want to try to clean this up or add a little bit more context for this, because sometimes it's hard to see what those bar heights are. And so I like to add text and you can achieve that by using the geom underscore text function from the ggplot2 package. And that takes a few different arguments. And one of those arguments is this AES function that we'll put in there. And um, what we'll do is we'll be mapping on the number of customers column to the label argument within AES. And what that will do is it'll take the number of customers and it will treat that as the labels for the bars. The other thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna specify position. And the position has to do with um, how we want the text to be positioned on this chart. And we're gonna use position dodge because we've dodged the bars in the previous function. So we want them to line up. We want the text to line up with the position of the bars. And we've specified here the width. So how far apart we want the text to be from the bars. And then we can also specify the vertical justification. So how far up or down do we want the text to be from the top of the bars? So if I run all of that here with all of the other things that we've layered on, this is what it looks like. Now, to give you some idea of how these different numbers play in, let me delete the V just is equal to negative one, or maybe let me make that V just is equal to zero. And let's see what happens to the position of these numbers on top of the bar here. So you see how that decreased a bit. Now I'm gonna make that V just is equal to one. And now these numbers are under the top of the bar. So you can see what that number does there for V just. 
Now, let me put this back to negative one so that it's floating on top of the bars. And let me get rid of the width argument within position dodge. And let's see what happens there. Now you see that the text is not separated anymore. All of these numbers are aligned. And that's a problem um, because that's not how the bars are distributed. We want the numbers to be on top of that. Some of these different arguments within the geom text function here help you position the text relative to the bars. The next thing I'm going to talk about is the labels for the x-axis and the y-axis. Oftentimes they're not what you want them to be off the bat. So what you can do is you can change them. And the way you can change them is to use the labs function from the ggplot2 package. And that function will take the arguments x is equal to and then you can put in the text for what you want the text label for the x-axis to be. In this case we're going to change it to educational attainment instead of just education. And then y is equal to and we'll make that number of customers instead of number of customers where it's all just squished together without any spaces so now let me highlight all of that in addition to those other layers and then hit run and now we see that on the x-axis it says educational attainment and then on the y-axis number of customers with spaces in between the next thing i'm going to talk about is the ability to change the colors you might not like these colors by default and because we used the fill argument here in this geom or in this ggplot2 function and we said fill is equal to income we are able to specify manually the colors we want for the different levels of income using this function from ggplot2 called scale underscore fill underscore manual and this will take the argument values and then we'll say equals to and then we'll give it a list here using this C colon and then the vector of color names here that we want to use. And this has to have the same number of colors that you're providing as the number of levels for the income variable here because again we used income for the fill variable. So we're going to say red, black, blue, green, yellow. So this, this will map red to the, the first category for income, black to the second category, blue to the third category, etc. So we'll highlight that all. Now we've got all the different layers that we've written up here. We'll run that and we'll see that that's in fact what it does. It's change the colors now. And you can change those to whatever colors you want them to be. Um, sometimes customers have a style guide that they like to adhere to. And so I might change the colors of the bars to adhere to their style guide. Now the ggplot2 package is very powerful and very flexible, but there's a lot of nuance and a lot of things to learn about it. If you want to create very sophisticated visualizations, um, you can accomplish a lot on a regular basis by sticking to the basics, but um, there are instances where you want to create something that's visually stunning but very complicated and really the sky's the limit when it comes to the ggplot2 package which makes it one of my go-to packages for client projects if this video was helpful and you'd like to see more videos on how to use r to create a variety of charts and conduct different data analyses please subscribe